G'day, welcome to uh, another episode of On the Road with the Pirate. Although today I'm not actually on the road, I'm more like in the air, but uh, I'm a bit excited about this one because we're going to Norfolk Island. The first stop is uh, <coughs> overnight at uh, one of my favourite airport hotels, the Ibis Brisbane Airport Hotel. Um, I've done a review of this hotel on the other channel, um, I might post it on the On the Road channel, but uh, you can check it out there, I don't think I need to do another one, it's such a great hotel. So while on the island I'm staying at the uh, Seaview Hotel and Cottages, um, but I'm not going to feature that in, in this video. If you want to see a review of the hotel, um, check out the uh, Shit Hotels of Australia channel. So there, there was a sign at the airport that says you have to give way to cattle at all times. And uh, it is a bit uh, incongruous to see a cattle grid in uh, pretty much the main street. I'm just about to walk up and head into the town and check out the town centre while I wait for my hire car to arrive. So this is pretty much the centre of town. It's, uh, for a small island, it's actually quite a big town. Um, so it's pretty much got everything you could possibly need. And a beautiful laid back country town feel. It's, it feels really good. I can see why people move here for lifestyle reasons. Um, well, I might have to actually uh, reassess things. Well, here we go on a lap of Philip, no, a lap of Norfolk Island. I don't know what the speed limit here is on the island, but um, heading down towards Kingston, but we're not going to go to Kingston on this lap first, we're going to take a right. Having a look at the map, I really don't think I'm going to have enough left on the SD card to do an entire loop. Um, so I might just go for a drive and give you some highlights tomorrow. But first up, here we go, the first cows have right of way. Okay, so that little one, it's got right of way. Is that big one going to stay there? Hope so. This is Fisherman's Lane and this is pretty much as far north as you can drive on Norfolk Island. Pretty impressive. So this is Cascade, um, the, on the north side of the island, which is the uh, alternative uh, landing place. But even so, it still doesn't actually have a harbour. Um, you know what this place reminds me of? It reminds me of Newfoundland. This place here definitely has the feel of Newfoundland. On the way in from the airport, the uh, <coughs> bus driver made sure he pointed out the uh, one of the most important locations in the centre of town, the Liquor Bond store with uh, duty free prices. Just been inside and it looks like for spirits, there definitely are duty free prices. Uh, but the beers, wow, Carlton of two is new for $75. Um, doesn't seem to be duty free. I'm now going to go in and book a convict experience tour. Samuel 
So we're on the uh, Pine Tree Tours uh, Convict Settlement Tour. Uh, the tour goes for about an hour and a half and we've uh, almost completed the first hour and uh, all we've seen so far is the cemetery. So let's see um, how much extra they managed to cram in. But the guy is really, really knowledgeable. So if, you, if you're interested in some convict stories, I really suggest you, uh, you come along on this tour. down the main street of Burnt Pine and we'll see how many people give us the Norfolk wave and how many don't. There's one, there's two. I'm betting it's the tourists that don't give us the wave. Tourist. I guess the average tourist is probably not used to waving to people. For me coming from Dover it's pretty much a done thing. You, you wave to everybody as these guys do. Done the way it is. This seems a pretty big deal and I can see why. It seems like the um, Australian government is up to its usual games, taking away the sovereignty of the people of Norfolk Island, um, yet still treating it as though you're travelling overseas. Um, yeah, there are some dark sides to Norfolk Island which still remain. Yes, that is not an Australian flag over there. That's actually the Union Jack. Another hint that the Norfolk Islanders might feel that they have actually been colonised by Australia. It's very, very interesting. Again, we see uh, the self-determination with more of an allegiance to uh, Mother England than to Australia. Or maybe this is uh, the Norfolk Island version of the Aboriginal tent embassy because I didn't realise that um, we're right across the road from Government House. We notice the Australian Government <clears throat> and the um, first Australian flag was seen flying in Norfolk Island. They seem to be hanging the Norfolk Island flag sideways. I wonder if that's a, a comment. And I was right. The official tent embassy. Our five demands to the Australian government. Stop your misrepresentation of our history, culture and traditions. Return the assets and land you stole in 2016. Respect our right to determine our own future and restore democracy on Norfolk Island now. Halt your racism against the indigenous Norfolk people and honour your legal obligation to the UN to decolonise Norfolk Island. Okay, I would agree with uh, four out of five of those, except I don't think there are any indigenous Norfolk people. Um, the Pitcairn Islanders arrived in 1856 and uh, at least one member of my family was here for five years before that. I haven't seen seawater as clear as that since I was last back in Taz. Just brilliant. This is a magic place. Absolutely magic. This is Emily Bay. It's uh, obviously it's a perfect spot for swimming and uh, there seems to be some brave soul actually in there. Bearing in mind that I think the maximum temperature today is about 15 degrees and it's getting later in the afternoon and I've got uh, thermals and a polar fleece top on and I'm from Tasmania, I'm not getting in there. 
Um, yeah, apparently in, uh, when it's warmer, if you, you can go snorkelling and actually snorkel out to a, a little reef within the bay. Apparently it's absolutely brilliant. I've got a couple of mates who've done it. Um, but uh, not for me, not today. Every road on the island is like this. In fact, this is actually a good one. Just being potholed and filled in and potholed and filled in. Now I understand that uh, Norfolk Island is actually partly under the administration of the Queensland government now. So um, maybe Queensland and government have applied a little bit of Bruce Highway technology to these roads. Okay, this is Mount Pitt. Mount Pitt is the second highest mountain on, uh, on Norfolk Island uh, at 318 metres. It's uh, one metre uh, shorter than uh, Mount Bates. Um, so yeah, let's take a look around. So this is the summit track from Mount Pitt. Um, it goes for 500 metres, it loops up with some other tracks, so um, let's go for a walk. So this is uh, Mount Bates. This is the highest point on uh, Norfolk Island, 219 metres. And uh, while that doesn't sound very high, it's actually pretty steep in that it goes pretty much straight up. Looking out to the north, Okay, this is looking south from uh, the Mount Bates Lookout, out to Phillip Island and the airport, and looking east. And I must admit, I was a little bit um, optimistic in my planning for today's walk, because my plan was to walk from this point here uh, down the track to the um, Captain Cook Monument. Walking down would be okay. Just walking back up might, uh, might tax these asthmatic lungs and spindly legs. Okay, so this is the network of tracks um, on the, uh, in the National Park around uh, Mounts Pitt and Mount Bates. Um, I'm currently on at the You Are Here spot. I'm gonna head down the Red Road track, which is the blue, and uh, take a quick detour down the Palm Glen track and the Palm Glen circuit track and then see how my asthmatic lungs cope with the climb all the way back up again. But um, the, you see the dark blue and the light blue leading down to the Captain Cook monument. Well, I'm certainly not going to be going down there today. Uh, well, I've made it to the start of the Palm Glen track, 290 metres, an easy walk. Um, and just uh, looking where I've actually come down from, uh, it wasn't an easy walk walking down that hill with all that gravel, so I'm not thinking it's going to be easy for these asthmatic lungs walking back up again. But we'll see how we go. We have got all day. Well, as Steve Marsh would say, that's me fully knackered, folks. I really need to get fit. But bugger, bloody bugger COVID-19 and what it's done to my lungs. Not happy. Get 
like the cows. So this beach behind us is uh, Cemetery Bay, um, named because of its uh, close uh, location to the original cemetery from the, uh, the convict settlement. Why did the chicken cross the road? Get out of the way of me. scenery is just absolutely amazing isn't it so this is bull bay on the uh, southeast coast of norfolk island and uh, whereas you have to give way to the cows on the road it's like maybe you've got to give way to the cows at sea as well who would have thought there'd be cows or actually steers at bull bay perish the thought I've been uh, really surprised by the uh, number of these uh, Japanese key vans or key and key cars as well. So key being the uh, the tiny cars that uh, special license in Japan to drive in the little alleyways. That, um, I'm just amazed how many of them are here on Norfolk Island. Um, most of the high cars, for example, are models that I don't recognise. Um, and there's lots of these little vans. And I started to wonder, perhaps maybe they imported them directly from Japan. And I think I found the proof. Because um, this one here has still got the Japanese kanji writing on the side. So um, I guess it must be like grey imports for motorcycles. I mean, uh, they reach their roadworthy life limit in Japan, which is very, very uh, early. Um, they brought in here to Norfolk Island. So I'm standing here at the uh, Two Chimneys Reserve on the uh, southeast corner of the island, or maybe a little bit more east. And um, I'm not sure why it's called the Two Chimneys Reserve. There's an interpretive sign up there, but it's quite weathered. Uh, it makes some reference to the Pitcairn Islanders. But the thing I really wanted to point out about this reserve, as with all of the others, is how immaculately mown they are. I mean, even at the top of the, uh, the summit track, between Mount Pitt and Mount Bates. Um, someone had obviously got, taken a lawnmower up there and, and mowed the grass. It was really, really neatly well done. And the furniture is always in immaculate condition, sturdily built, clean, uh, never actually, oh, well. Okay, this is the, uh, the first one that I've seen graffitied so far. Uh, thanks, Emma. It's obvious that the sides of the roads are kept mowed by the, um, by the cows, but um, yeah, top effort to whoever manages uh, these reserves on Norfolk Island because it's, uh, it's just immaculately maintained. Brilliant, really well done. Um, it just makes uh, just another thing to make this place really, really enjoyable. So I just filled up the uh, hire car, 19 litres of petrol, $55.36, it's uh, $2.90 a litre. So uh, it's not cheap and I'm surprised I actually used that much uh, in, the, in the amount of driving I did on the island, but oh well, one of the downsides I guess. 
So I've absolutely loved my time here on Norfolk Island, even though it only was for five days. Uh, the place is truly beautiful. Um, it has an amazing community feel and the history that's encompassed in uh, the penal settlement in Kingston. It's just out of this world. But I guess the question is, could I live here? The sense of community, yeah. The convict history, yes. The environment, absolutely. But um, there are three things that are important in my life. And I've mentioned one already, sailing. Um, no yacht club. And another one is, uh, whilst I love living in a small community, uh, in a small town, and I really miss living in, uh, in my little hometown of Dover, and this has all the feel of a, a, a small town living, if I want to, I can get in my car and drive for an hour and I'm in Hobart and I've got access to everything that a city, even though a small city, but everything that a city provides. And here, you've got to get on a plane. Um, I mean, I didn't even see a hardware store here. There might be one, I'm not sure. Um, and thirdly is my love of Asian food. Um, Chinese restaurant closed down. The uh, Leagues Club had a couple of Asian um, meals on the menu. Um, but the supermarket just had no ingredients. And I mean, I can probably live with the expensive prices you paid in the supermarket, but it was very, very bland what was available. I mean, the IGA in Dover, again, a town quarter the size, or maybe serving the population half the size of, of Norfolk Island, has pretty much everything you could want. So I don't think I could live here. I'd really like to say I could, I'd really like to live here, but I don't think I could. I think I'd miss those three. Um, yeah. So that's the end of uh, this episode of On the Road with the Pirate from Norfolk Island. Uh, there is another one uh, about uh, my family's convict history here on the island, so stick around for that one. But if you've uh, liked this uh, video, uh, give it a like, uh, consider subscribing, and uh, if you've got any questions or comments, put them in the, in the comment box below. And uh, until then, we'll see you somewhere on the road. Thanks for watching. This says it all. The 2017 Norfolk Island phone book, Fast Find a Person by their nickname. Their nicknames are actually recorded in the phone book. But um, there doesn't seem to be any hierarchy of wave here, which is interesting because in, uh, in Dover, if you really know someone, you give them the full wave, then it must be a tourist. And if you're acquainted with them, you give them the you give them a two-fingered wave. And if you don't really know them, you just give them one finger.